Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so the Lord Christ is the light, the way, and the truth. And uh, in this video, we're going to begin discussing the squeeze theorem. This is example zero. And so we're going to state the squeeze theorem and then look at a very famous example, that of the limit is x goes to zero of sine x over x. We're going to use theta instead of x, but same difference, right? Okay, cool. Now, this will be the first of uh, many examples on the squeeze theorem because there are a lot of fun problems, hard fun problems and so I'm going to give you many more examples on the squeeze theorem. Uh, so yeah, look out for all the other videos to follow. But yeah, um, what it says and the squeeze theorem can be stated uh, both for functions and sequences and I've stated it here for sequences is uh, if, if we're looking at it for sequences, what it says, which is practically the same as uh, what it says for functions, is that if we have a sequence a sub n and then another sequence b sub n and a third sequence uh, c sub n and uh, this is true, which is that b sub n is squeezed in between a sub n and c sub n. And in turn, the limit is n goes to uh, some number d of a sub n is the same as the limit n going to d of um, c sub n, and let's call that limit L. Then it must follow that the limit is n goes to d of b sub n is the same as uh, the limit of a sub n and c sub n. In other words, if uh, b sub n is squeezed in between a sub n and c sub n, then uh, it must have the same limit so long as a sub n and c sub n have the same limit as they tend to some number d. Yeah? Okay, now uh, again, very, very similar statement if we stated it for functions, so I'm not gonna, um, you know, claim that to be different. And uh, in French books, they call this the police theorem because French people are lame. Another point of why they're lame is like, they have this lopsided uh, currency deal with West African countries. So still like kind of treating West African countries as colonies. And so like, don't ever trust anybody who says that like snails are a delicacy. Um, that's the lesson there. <laughs> now for our famous example uh, of uh, the limit is uh, theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta being one, uh, we're gonna need this visual. Uh, so this visual has circle O, but additionally, uh, triangles uh, POA and POT, right? And POT must be a right triangle because I've uh, drawn PT so that PT is a tangent to the circle, yeah? Okay, now um, there are of course other triangles, there's at least one other triangle that I see, but like the triangles of concern, the ones we care about are POA again and POT. And then we also care about this shaded sector, yeah? And clearly this visual shows that the area of uh, this Let's call it red triangle instead of pink. I don't like pink. Yeah, but the area of this uh, triangle POA is less than the area of this sector, the shaded sector, which in turn is less than the area of uh, triangle POT, the right triangle POT. And I use alpha for area. And so like uh, stating that, uh, like, you know, writing it down, I'm going to say that the area of triangle uh, POA, right? is less or equal to the area of the sector, which I'm just gonna denote with S, which in turn is less or equal to the area of uh, triangle POT. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, now, now, uh, if I may erase, because I definitely need the space, um, let's try and figure out what the area of triangle POA and the area of, um, the area of triangle uh, POT must be. and of course, also the area of the sector. First, um, the area of a triangle POA, right? Alpha um, POA. What is that? Well, if we use uh, the fact that um, if we have, you know, one, one side and another side in a triangle and the angle between them, if we use that formula that says that the area is uh, this times this times uh, the sine of theta times one half, in other words, if we use that one half AB sine theta formula, then the area of triangle POA is clearly equal to, it's clearly equal to one half R times R times the sine of theta. So that's one half R squared uh, sine theta, right? Okay, cool. Now, uh, the area of the sector is next. So first let's write this up here. So the area of triangle POA is one half uh, r squared sine theta and we have this is less or equal to and then next is the area of the sector right and for the area of the sector we know that um, uh, 
the angle of theta over uh, 2 pi, right, this portion over the whole, right, must be in equal proportion to the sector's area over um, pi r squared. And multiplying both sides by pi r squared, we see that uh, the sector S must have area uh, theta over uh, 2 pi times um, pi r squared. And there's some canceling to be done here, specifically that. So we have theta r squared times 1 half for the area of the sector. So the area of the sector is 1 half theta, right? 1 half theta times r squared. Okay, cool. And this is less or equal to the area of the right triangle POT, right? And so um, next on to the area of the right triangle POT. Okay, so alpha um, POT is clearly, since it's a right triangle, it's just one half the product of the two uh, legs, right? So it's one half, one leg is R, so one half R times the other leg is PT. Right? Okay. Now, what is PT? How can we find PT? Well, since we've got a right triangle, we can do trigonometry. And so if we do trigonometry, we see that uh, tangent of uh, theta is equal to PT over R. And multiplying both sides of this by R, we see that PT is equal to R tan theta. Right? R tan theta. And so then the area of uh, triangle POT must be 1 half R times PT, which is R tan theta. So that's 1 half R squared uh, tan theta. So 1 half R squared tan theta. But wait, tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta. I gotta have a better strategy for this giant eraser. So tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta, right? So we could write sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, now there's some canceling we could do specifically. We can cancel one half from all. We can cancel r squared from all, right? And so then what we have is sine theta is less or equal to theta, which in turn is less or equal to uh, tan theta. And then if we divide by sine on all parts, right? So if we divide by sine theta here, divide by sine theta here, and then like divide by sine theta here, which would mean I could cancel that. Then what we have is, well, sine theta over sine theta is one. So we have one is less or equal to uh, theta over uh, sine theta, which is less or equal to, this is less or equal to, uh, we've canceled that sine, so we get one over cosine theta. And then if we take the reciprocal of uh, all parts here, uh, we have to uh, change the orientation of the inequality. And what we would have to follow is 1 is greater or equal to sine theta over theta is greater or equal to cosine uh, theta. For me, that's a little awkward. So I'd rather write it like with the cosine theta all the way on the left. So this is the same as writing cosine theta is less or equal to this, which is less or equal to 1. So I'd prefer to write that. So uh, let's write it that way. So we have cosine theta is less or equal to sine theta, um, I want the space, less or equal to sine theta over theta, which in turn is less or equal to 1. Okay, and then what we could do from here is send the limit, sorry, cosine theta, send the limit as theta goes to 0, so on all parts, lim theta goes to 0 lim theta goes to zero uh, lim theta goes to zero well what do we have the limit is theta goes to zero cosine theta is one so we have one is less or equal to uh, lim theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is less or equal to well this is clearly one and so by the squeeze theorem, this must be equal to 1. Voila. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, keep watching. Like I said, many more fun problems on the squeeze theorem to come. All right. Take care.